Hello. In chapter seven, we are going to talk about three different kinds of network flow models. A network is an arrangement of paths connected at various points, and we're trying to move something from one point to another. And there are a lot of real life problems that we can model as networks and we can draw a diagram. And this will not only help us understand what's going on, but it helps us solve the problem that we have in trying to move things. This is an example of a very simple network diagram. Network diagrams consist of nodes, which are drawn as points or circles, and these represent locations or maybe even just junctions between paths and the branches, which are drawn as lines, which connect the nodes and those represent flow. So they can be a path or a road, a wire, a pipe, all kinds of things that will help move things along. Nodes are labeled with numbers just as a label. So these are labeled one, two, three, and four. Node number one is where we begin, that's the origin. Any of the other nodes are destination nodes. A value is assigned to the branch, to the path, and that could be the distance, it could be the time it takes to get there, the cost it takes to move something there, etc. So this is an example in the book. He has these cities labeled, and we want to turn this into a network. Now to turn it into a network, we don't have to exactly match the map. We just need a representation of that where the nodes match and those numbers on the branches match. So to move from a map to a network, it would look something like this. You want to read the problem to find the origin, that's important, and make sure you label that as point one. And then you want to include all the nodes and all the branches and make sure that we get all the numbers on there correctly also. There are three types of network flow problems mentioned in the book. In this video, we're going to talk about the first two, the shortest root problem and a minimal spanning tree problem. The goal in a shortest root problem is to find the shortest route from the origin to all of the destinations. We're going to use this example from the book. We are moving things from Los Angeles to all of these different cities. The first step in the solution is to determine the shortest route from the origin to any other point that connects to the origin. So we want the closest node, the shortest route. So in this case, the shortest route is from one to three because nine is the smallest number that we have. To solve a shortest route problem, we're going to collect something called the permanent set. The permanent set is the set of nodes for which the shortest route has already been found. So we start with a permanent set of one. So for example, with that permanent set of one, the shortest route is to node three, and then we're gonna add node three to the permanent set. In summary, to solve a shortest route problem, we're going to look at all the nodes that are directly connected to the permanent set. We're gonna find the shortest route from the permanent set to any of the other destination nodes. And then we're going to include that in our permanent set to redefine the permanent set. And then we're gonna continue this until we have a shortest route to all the nodes. So for part two in this same problem, now our permanent set is one and three. So we look at all the nodes connected to either one and three, and we're looking for the shortest route again, the lowest number, so we have 16. So now we're gonna add two to our permanent set. In the next step, we've got one, two, and three in the permanent set. The nodes that connect are four, five, and six. Now we want to look at the total time from the origin and pick another node. So the smallest number might seem to be 12, but if we're going from one to four, that is actually 16 plus 12, which gives us 28. So the shortest route to four is nine plus 15, which is 24. 
but notice the other shortest roots possible grow out to five or grow up to six. Those would all be larger than 24. And you can see those times there in the chart on the right. Now we have one, two, three, and four in our permanent set. We're looking to add nodes five, six, or seven. Now the shortest root would be to add node six. Nine plus 22 is 31. And that's our next point to add. So we're gonna add six to the permanent set. So now our permanent set is one, two, three, four, six. And the next point in would be point five. We add that to our permanent set. And then the last point in is point seven. And the shortest path to get to point seven is from four to seven. So we were at 24 at four. We're gonna add 24 plus 19. That gets us to 43 to get to uh, node seven. There's our solution. Those are all the paths that we actually used and the numbers on them. And we can see how long it takes us to get to any of the nodes in our model. So the solution to get to Salt Lake City at node two, we take one to two, it's gonna take 16 hours. Phoenix, node three, one to three, nine hours. And to get to St. Louis, the last one on the list, one to three to four to seven, 43 hours. So this gives us the shortest route to all the cities in our model. Again, a summary on how to solve a shortest route problem. We wanna start at the origin. We select the node with the shortest direct route. We establish a permanent set. The origin is our first permanent set, and then the node that was selected in step one gets added. We figure out which nodes are directly connected to the permanent set find the shortest route from the permanent set to the new destination node. Really, we wanna find the shortest route from, in total from the origin. We wanna redefine our permanent set, and then we're gonna keep repeating that until every point is in the permanent set. The second kind of model I wanna talk about is called a minimum spanning tree. And in this model, our goal is to connect all the nodes in a network and we want to minimize the total branch lengths. In the book, he uses the exact same numbers, the exact same cities, and he says, let's connect them with cable. And he starts at node one. But really, you can start with any node in the network and you will get the same answer. So just for fun, I'm gonna start at node two because we really can start anywhere. You want to pick a node and select the closest node, and then that's gonna join the spanning tree. So at node two, the numbers coming off from two are 16, 12, and 25. I'm gonna pick 12, and I'm gonna go from node two to node four. At node four, we have the numbers coming off 14, 19, 17, 15, 35. I also want to keep looking at node two. It's, it's part of the network. So I have 16 and 25. The smallest number among all of those is the branch from four to five at 14. So five comes into my minimal spanning tree. The next smallest number that's actually connected to that minimal spanning tree is eight. So eight is the next number I add. Node seven comes into my minimal spanning tree. The next smallest number that's actually connected to the minimal spanning tree is 14. So I add node six to my tree. And I'm gonna keep doing this keep selecting the closest node, but I have to remember it has to be the closest one to any of the nodes already in the tree. At this point from node six, my minimums are 17 and 22, but that's not the smallest one that connects to the tree. The smallest node that connects to the tree is between four and three at 15. So that's the next node that comes into my minimal spanning tree. And then the last point to come in is node one, and the minimal distance that connects that to the spanning tree 
is from one to three. And that's the optimal solution. And it's the same solution the textbook author got from starting at point one. And you can start at any of the points and you'll see this is the minimum amount of cable I could lay to connect these, no matter what node I start with. So in summary, again, we can select any starting node, then we select the node closest to the starting node to join the spanning tree, and then we select the closest node not currently in the spanning tree. Select the one closest to any of the nodes already in the spanning tree. I'm going to repeat step three until all the nodes have joined the spanning tree. The last type of network flow model that's in this chapter is called a maximal flow problem or a max flow problem. It gives us the maximum capacity or the maximum flow along a network from an origin to a destination when there are several possible routes. So we can think of this in terms of traffic, plumbing, bandwidth. Now, the downside of max flow is that I find his diagrams really confusing. And so instead of me trying to do this in a video, we're going to do this in class. And not at first, we're gonna start with shortest route and the minimal tree diagrams, but then we will talk a lot about the max flow problems in class. So again, three types of network flow problems in chapter seven. They can be solved by looking at the network diagrams. I personally think that's a lot of fun. In class, we will also look at how to solve these problems with Excel. We can use Solver to minimize distances or maximize the flow, and we will look at how that works in class. Bye.